Hello everyone. My name is Rohit Kumar Nagaj and today we are going to see how we can use the capabilities of SolidWorks flow simulation to f do a thermal analysis of an LED bulb. So, let's start with the analysis. Before doing the analysis, we have to make some preparation of our geometry. So, here I am having a geometry of an LED bulb which is of 9 watt. So, here we can see this is the MCPCB. This is the heat sink of the LED bulb, and remaining is the solid insert and the fixture. Now here we are, we can see the solid cubes. These solid cubes represent the LED chip. And before modeling our LED bulb, we should first make it clear that the size of this solid cube should be similar to the size of the LED chip and the dimension of the LED chip we can get it from the data sheet of the LED chip now once our geometry is prepared we need to go to the flow simulation tab and from there we will create a new wizard to do our thermal analysis of LED bulb so now I'll click the wizard tab a new wizard window will pop up and I'll give a name like LED analysis next from here we can select our unit system so I'll change the temperature to Celsius next so this is an external flow because we want to see the temperature effect due to the flow natural convection of this LED bulb. So I'll go for an external analysis and keep in mind that we should tick this radio button so that we can see the temperature of the solid body also. We have to tick the radio button for the gravity in order to keep in mind that we need to see the effect of natural convection and check it the direction of the y-axis so we need to give the direction of the gravitational force in the direction of y so I'll change this to positive 9.81 click next here we will select a default gas which is our in our case is air next uh, default material for the metal so I'll take aluminium 6061 next no need of roughness here we will give the ambient temperature to be 45 degrees Celsius this is the temperature in which we need to see what is the junction temperature of our LED in this ambient temperature keep remaining things as default and kick the finish motion now we can see our project is created now we need to define the domain in which we need to see the effect so I'll go in the flow simulation tab I'll go and edit our computational domain so in this case we need to have an ample amount of computational domain to see the actual effect of natural com convection for the demonstration purpose I am taking it as a small domain but in actual case we should take it as uh, 10 times the direction of the geometry so now I have defined our computational domain
now our computational domain is defined I'll go and hide this so that it, it does not affect our visibility now before starting our project we need to create a two register component which is used to define the thermal resistance of our LED chip so first of all we'll create a two register component so that we can define our LED chip so we'll get, go here create and edit and we will go and create a new item we will define a name to it say LED2 now in this case we have to define two things the junction to case thermal resistance the unit of which is Kelvin per watt and the junction to board thermal resistance the unit of which again is Kelvin per watt so these value we can get from the data sheet of the LED so for that we need to do some uh, analysis and we need to find out the junction and case thermal resistance and junction to board thermal resistance for our LED chip and which we can easily find it from the data sheet of the LED so say I'll give it uh, 18 Kelvin per watt just for reference and say 3 Kelvin per watt and click save and close it so now here we can see that our LED 2 is created now software doesn't know that what is what which is our LED component so we need to define it so we can define it by selecting the top face of our LED and here we can see that the part of that top face is taken by the software itself now since this is a 9 watt LED and we are having 18 LED chips so each LED chip is of 0.5 watt but we need to find out the thermal analysis so we will only take the thermal output of this LED which is say around 70% uh, of the total voltage so we will take 0.3 watt 35 watt so this is the thermal heat voltage which is released by an LED chip the remaining 30% is go gone as an optical intensity of the LED so now we have defined one LED we'll click OK ok we have in select this now we have selected and click ok in the similar way we have to define it for all the LEDs so I will define it one by one for all the LEDs now so now here we can see that all 18 thermal resistant component is formed each is for each LED so we are having 18 thermal to resistor component now we have to define the goal what is our main aim so here we need to find out the temperature on all each LED the junction temperature so I'll select an LED and here I'll select the maximum temperature over solid and click OK so now we can see that a maximum goal of maximum temperature on this LED is created similarly we have to define it for all the LEDs so I am going to define it one by one for all the LED so now we can see that our goal of maximum temperature for each LED is now created now the next thing is to define the solid material so initially as we as you can remember that we have defined a default solid material of aluminium 6062 for all the bodies now locally if we want to change that material of any of the body we can define it from here like insert solid material suppose I want to change the material of this cap I'll go here I'll select brass this part and click OK so now this 
part is of brass material and remaining body is of aluminium 6062 now in LED industry we are having some thermal resistances some contact resistances like the solder resistance between the MCPCB and the LED chip so if we want to incorporate that resistance we will go here in contact resistance insert contact resistance select the face the contact face between the LED and the MCPCB so I will select other select this face and I will select the thermal resistance for material thickness and predefined alloys and here we are having a vice library of materials of solder so I will take solder and click OK since the solder is between each LED and the MCPCB so we have to take the face for each LED contact so I will take this similarly I have to take this So in the similar fashion we have to define the contact resistance for the sold soldering for each of the LED surface and click OK. Now one more thing we use uh, thermal pad or thermal paste between the MCPCB and the heat sink. So we are having the library for that also. We will insert contact resistance. We will go in resistances interface materials dark awning and thermal grease so I'll take thermal grease and say 0.25 mm and click now we need to select the face so I'll select the contact face between the MCPCB and the heat sink and click OK so now we have defined the two contact resistances one is the, for the solder resistance which is between the LED and the MCPCB another is for the interface material that is the thermal grease which is between the MCPCB and the heat sink so everything we have defined now we have to create a mesh so we will create a mesh Add a definition, take it to 5 level. As we all know, that the more be better result we will get with a final mesh. So, it is always advisable that we need to go for grid independence test. But for the presentation view sake, I am just taking a Post mesh so that we can get a faster result and say after that run so now our analysis is completed now it's time for post processing so we'll see the results are not loaded here so we'll go right click on the results folder and load now the results are loading so now we can create a cut plot in this manner and I'll show this to get a better visibility I'll just hide the model and here we can see the temperature if we want to probe our result see the temperature on the LEDs now so 
so we can see the temperature at any location so here we can see that ambient temperature we have taken 45 degrees celsius so it is 45 degrees celsius at the ambient so here so here we can see that how much computational domain we need to take so here as we can see that 45 degrees celsius is there so there is no effect of the heat on this location so the size of our computational domain was ample so i'll just remove these now probe similarly we want to see the heat sink we can see the heat sink see and again we can see the temperature at each location as we can remember we have defined some goals so we can if we want to see the numerical values we can see the numerical values also so this was the qualitative result now we can see the quantitative result so here we can see the temperature on each of the led so 94 99 97 maximum value average value minimum value all we can see here these are the numerical values so now hide it and in order to show it into your presentation there is a very good tool in solid work flow simulation first of all i need to hide these plots i just show the full model and now we can see how the natural convection of flow is taking place around the model so these are the flow trajectories and if you want to animate it we can play it so this is the way how the air flow will take place around the model so i hope you like this video if you like this video please hit the like button and do subscribe it for more interesting videos thank you